Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.cam, where we learn by building things, but not today. Today we're going to be refactoring things, because that has been my life for the past, uh, uh, I guess since last summer. I've been working at this startup that had uh, a code base that was initially written by a team of contractors, and then turned over to a different team of contractors uh, that was not as familiar with Elixir. And it's... Uh, it's kind of a crazy code base in general. Uh, it's It hasn't had a, a single person on it from the beginning uh, through now. So it's, uh, um, there are, basically there's nobody who understands it all. And there are a lot of, a lot of parts of it that were using the same libraries that it, they had been when it started, which was late 2019. So as you can see from this little upgrade chart, when I started, um, I actually couldn't even run it on my Mac because the version of Erlang was too old. And it was using Live View, but it was like using a Live View from just a few months after the initial announcement of Live View. So uh, it was it was actually a big ordeal to upgrade it. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Today, I'm, I'm actually just gonna focus on uh, just some of the unnecessary complexity in the app. And I can't show you the, the code from the app itself, but I can show you uh, uh, representative code of a similar shape uh, that's going to look a lot like uh, the, the kinds of changes that I, I made. Let me bump up the font size a bit for everyone. So here is a, a very big controller, uh, and it, it, is, it is very big, many thousands of lines. Um, we're going to start with just a, a little function here and see what we can do to simplify things. So here we're getting selected products from an API call, there's some, some struct. We've got a JSON decode here. And then we're mapping the result of that and taking the keys and the values and then using string to atom, uh, which is a little dangerous, but we must know that this isn't gonna cause an atom leak because it's been running like this for a long time. And um, we're getting this uh, the same shape from the API each time. We really want the keys to be atoms. There's actually a function in json.decode that'll do that. It's called keys atoms, or there's just an option you can pass in. It'll do the same thing that does. Okay, a little bit of, let's see, we've got an enum reduce. And this reduce is getting an item out of a product list. Then if this condition is true, we're adding it to the accumulator. Otherwise, we're just keeping the accumulator the same as it was. So this is actually the same thing as just an enum.filter. And filter doesn't have the, doesn't have the first argument there. So we've got the product still. And instead of this accumulator, it's just going to be product. If it's a member, then we do add it. If it's not a member, we don't have it, so actually the whole condition we need is just going to be this. And then instead of enum.member, we could actually just do in. So if the product identifier uh, is in, the identifier is in selected products, then it passes the filter. If not, it doesn't. Okay, so. For this little micro spot, this is all I would change to it. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated one where we can get, uh, we can really get some mileage out of pattern matching. So we have this get username from listing. And this was in the middle of a huge, uh, huge, huge chunk of code. So I didn't know exactly what was, uh, what was already in this listing struct. Uh, it's very large, but I knew that it, it does have uh, a boolean here, owner type, and listing.owners. Um, I may have changed some names of variables here. It's not, as I said, I'm not doing an exact copy of what was in the code base, but it's the same idea. So you're getting uh, this. So we know that listing.owners must be a list, or we know that it's it's enumerable. So let's just let's just like put a comment up here and start thinking of of what this looks like. So owners is a list of something and it's at least three long okay we do an enum.slice then we do 
enum with index. So with index would turn like A, B, C, that would turn that into A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, so on. Um, and what are we doing with the index? We're using the index to map over, or we're not using the index. Interesting. So we actually have no reason to even get the index. We'll just, uh, yeah, we're adding an index and then we're throwing the index away. And I actually had a to do comment earlier asking exactly this question. So we'll just get rid of the index, make things simpler. So we know that in this map, now we're actually back to just the uh, A, B, and C. Now in this map, we know that each of these items is going to have, uh, well, it's also going to be enumerable. So we know that it's going to have a name. So, so A's name would be at the zero position. So that would be the first thing. So it's going to have a name. And then the first position, it's going to have an email. And maybe it's going to have more stuff. But we don't know. And B is going to be the same structure, and C is going to be the same structure, and so on. So what we can do with this is we can actually just pattern match this structure out. So we can, instead of doing the map over just the vendor like so, and this, this code will work exactly as it had before. We're just not getting the index. Better delete that down here. We can pattern match inside this vendor and just get the name and the email. And since we don't know if there's another item or not, um, if we do this and each of these things only has a name and an email and nothing else, uh, we'll get a pattern match error and it'll crash. So what we actually want to do is pattern match any list that has at least two things. So it's, it's going to have name, email, and then rest. Okay, so we've already gotten the email and the name out, so we can just change that to name and uh, to, uh, to email. And then change this to name. And it's simplified it quite a bit. And we're actually gonna have almost the exact same logic in this one, uh, except that, let's see, the name is first and the email is third. So we'll have something else here. We don't know what it is. We'll get the name out, the zero out position, ignore the first position, then email out of second position, and up to the possibility of more. Okay, so we can just grab this exact same, exact same result and delete that. And we've simplified things a fair amount, I would say, just, just having just having it so we can see the structure. I would also probably, I would, I would in general, I prefer to just use take instead of slice since we don't have to, uh, since we are starting from the very beginning, we'll just take three. And uh, that would that would be basically be it for this function. All right, then at the top of our big controller, or it's actually not the top, but we had through, you know, probably the thousand some lines of code before this, but there's a success page and in this success page, uh, we're, we're checking some flag out of the con, and then we're doing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of setup. Then there's a bunch more logic, and then we render the page. There had been uh, a cursory push to comment out unused variables, or not to comment them out, but to, uh, um, to prepend an underscore because uh, there are compiler warnings if you uh, if you have variables you're not using. So knowing that, uh, that we never even use this current user, we'll just delete it. It's just a wasted call of database. Okay, what we have here is a whole bunch of checks uh, to make sure that something's not nil. We're basically saying if the listing address state is not nil, we use that for the state variable. If it is nil, then we use a, a blank string. 
We do the exact same thing with locality, street number, street. We'll make a function, uh, just an anonymous function in line here. We we'll call it nils to blanks and or just nils to empty string, maybe nils to empty nil, singular nil to empty string. And that's going to take some input. And then if the input is nil, this was actually the exact same thing if we use is nil. And if the string is nil, then do an empty string, else just pass it along as is. Um, so now we can say state equals nil to empty string of x uh, of listing dot address date and, and we can do the exact same thing for the uh, the other options so we'll do that with locality locality is nil to empty string of listing I'm not sure why it's not auto completing address locality maybe because I've never saved the file this is actually just in uh, a detached file out there doing nothing. All right, so we'll grab that. Now to empty string. Okay, got this. Since it's an anonymous function, we need to uh, we need to have that dot after the name of it. Okay, so we've got the street number. And we're just going to do the exact same thing for the street and listing address read. Okay. And we have address, but it's not being used. So we might as well get rid of address. And we have commission, but it's not being used. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the end of the if. Marketing in and marketing val don't get used, so there's no reason to assign them. Uh, and in that case, none of these things get used either. We don't have those. We also don't need the nil to the empty string. Um, and we can just delete the whole thing. So that's, the, that's my favorite kind of refactoring. We never have to worry about that code breaking again. And I think that's a pretty good stopping spot. See you next time.